Hello folks, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing a little bit of a different video. One, because I thought this thing was cool enough to uh, get its own video, and uh, two, because I am currently trying to distract myself. There's an extremely expensive tape deck that I've got my eyes on. I've wanted it for a couple of years now, and uh, my wallet is very clear about me not doing it right now. So uh, yeah, I need a distraction. So here we go. Anyhow, today's video is going to be about this here magazine, which was bundled with an, another one of my uh, tape deck acquisitions in Japan. The tape deck in question is sitting off in the other room in my overflow storage rack. I don't want to get it out right now, so you'll see it in the next multi-diagnosis video whenever that happens to be. But uh, yeah, this came with it, and uh, I've leafed through it, and there is so much cool stuff in here that we have to cover it, I think. Basically what this is, is it's a radio technology magazine out of Japan. I think that's what it is. Could be wrong. And in order to find this in the Japanese auctions, you have to use the actual Japanese Kanto script here. So you kind of have to know what you're looking for to find this. But uh, it's very thick. Extremely so. Over 240 pages. So uh, yeah, there's lots of cool stuff in here I wanted to show you. Sorry about the glare. There's nothing I can do about it. Anyway, it's uh, Radio Technology 1983, issue number one. So I'm assuming this means January. And this is the uh, text of the spine here, if you can see it. So yeah, I can't wait to show you guys what's in here, because uh, this is keeping me from making a very expensive mistake right now. <laughs> I don't want to deform this too much, but I'm going to have to in order to uh, show you guys what's in here. First up, Diatone. That looks like an amazing speaker system to me. Diatone is Mitsubishi, for those of you who don't already know. I've talked about them before. Diatone is the D and the A and D on my uh, best recording tape deck right now. Grand Age Speaker System DS5000, 495,000 yen. That's 4,950 bucks as the exchange rate goes these days, but you got to factor in inflation in that too, so this is probably like 7,500 or 10,000 or something like crazy like that these days. Anyhow, definitely a very expensive speaker system. Next page, Kenwood LO3DP. This was back when CD players were brand new to the market. And uh, yeah, they all had extremely high dollar amounts on them back then. 240,000 yen, that's 2,400 if I'm doing the conversion to today's dollars. Factor in inflation and you get the idea. This. I want this. Pioneer PD1 CD player. 198,000 yen back in the day. In fact, I'm looking for any of these types of CD players that have the uh, the vertical loading with a window in it. Because, uh, man, those are just so cool. But yeah, first ever CD players. They're always going to be hard to find. And uh, quite frankly, probably expensive today if you find one. Your daddy, 200M, Yamaha. Yamaha's a brand I haven't got into yet with cassette decks, but I need to get into them. Hopefully next year. We'll see what things are like for my budget. This HA03, I wonder what that's about. It's Yamaha, whatever it is. Simple is best. If you say so, Yamaha. Here's another one, Toshiba Oryx CD. Oryx was their premium brand. Kind of like A&D for Akai and Diatone and uh, Low D for Hitachi and whatnot. But yeah, anything like this, I would love to have one. I don't care if it's Toshiba or Pioneer or Panasonic or whatever. And this is where this uh, magazine's kind of like a combination of a stereo review and uh, popular electronics. I love this magazine. 
honestly, I'm thinking of buying a whole box of these magazines now because this one is so cool. But uh, yeah, 35 megahertz scope. My uh, Oon scope, my portable one. Obviously a better scope these days than this would be, but uh, this is an analog scope and there are some things you would want analog for anyway, so. Even Rome has a, a transistor advertisement in this magazine. Cool! Audio Technica. Still a big name in, in turntables and uh, cartridges these days, which is basically what this is, it looks like. But uh, now we get into the tape decks here, I guess. This looks like a store advertisement, actually. And this would be for Hitachi. And their premium brand, Low D. Decking 7, Decking 8, Decking 9. I'm looking for one of those. Haven't found one yet, but I'm looking. Haven't been looking hard, but I'm still looking. 110,000 yen for that back in the day. 1100 bucks. In 1983, you do the math. Let's see what else is here. RV7, that strikes me as being possibly an auto reverse. And it kind of looks like it too, but uh, double tape deck, who cares? But yeah, decking nine, I'll take one of them. Oh, yes, definitely a, a store advertisement here inset into the magazine, but we'll skip most of that. Dynavector. I've never heard of them as a brand before, but uh, yeah, there you go. Anyway, looks like we have an, a uh, write-up on the TDK factory here. Very cool. And uh, I'm monitoring you guys on, on my, or I'm monitoring this recording on my uh, iPhone, but I think I'm going to have to close it out because I kind of want to see what this says. So I'm going to let the... Uh, the device above you keep recording and I'm going to fire up my translate here because I want to know what this is about. You might even be able to see. The annual production of videotapes is expected to exceed, exceed 12 million units. Yeah, this is about videotapes it looks like. so. Uh, We'll just continue on. Oh, look at this. Details on the TDK factory. This is awesome. Yeah, I need a crate of these magazines. What do we got here? STS? What? Oh, AccuPhase. That's Pioneer. I think. Could be wrong. Translate. Translate. Yeah, I need to learn Japanese just so I can read this magazine. That's kind of actually why I bought it. I want to be able to uh, learn Japanese before I try and go over there. But uh, yeah, AccuPhase is Pioneer. So yeah, that's AccuPhase. And this is all AccuPhase. Oh, here's another one. Kyocera, DA01. Yes, folks. Kyocera used to be about uh, audio gear. And in fact, their tape decks are high on my list of stuff I want. So, uh, yeah, I'm keeping an eye out. I don't know if I've got the budget for for a lot when it comes to Kyocera because they never did a three head. But, uh, yeah, it could be something I might make an exception for the uh, the two head, three head budget rule. I might be willing to go up a little for a Kyocera tape deck. Because they're all direct drive anyway, I think. Could be wrong. And here's another one. Victor, a.k.a. JVC, had one of these front loader units. And I actually looked, as soon as I saw this, uh, this page of the magazine earlier, I looked, and there is exactly one of these on From Japan right now. So uh, I'm not bidding on it because it's all smashed up, but... Uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind having one of these. SL1000 Mark III D. That's Technics, obviously. And more Technics on this page. 
Uh, what have we got here? 500 plus, 500 watts, 8 ohms. That looks like Yamaha. And this, this is exciting. This is very exciting. Let me get my translate back up here. What this is here is it's a prototype micro cassette DAT deck. I kid you not. Technics wanted to do DAT with a micro cassette. And they got as far as a prototype, it looks like. So, uh, yeah, it would be real cool to find one of those in the wild, but I doubt I would ever find one. And over here, what have we got? We've got some kind of a crazy turntable setup. I don't want to get the translate out for this one, but uh, it looks interesting. Let's see, what do we got here? That's Kyocera down there. Sansui there. Nakamichi there, I think. That could be Nak, I don't know. Kind of looks like him. All right, let's translate that one. Lux kit. Eh, I don't know. You guys will have to tell me. I don't want to spend too much time on any one page because we got a lot of them to go through. Stylus assembly there. Ogura. Sure. Oh, and look at this. There's a full write-up on that little debt deck. The microcassette one we just looked at. This is so cool. Looks like this is a prototype with cassettes. And this is with uh, microcassettes. That is so awesome that uh, Technics and Panasonic was trying stuff like this in uh, 1983. This looks like something to do with Sony. And there's a bunch of these pages of uh, stuff I'm not going to bother trying to translate for you guys, I don't think. Clearly this is the uh, stereo review part of this. And I'm such an audio nerd that uh, when I was like 11 or 12 years old, the first thing I did with my paper boy money is uh, I went and bought a three-year subscription to Stereo Review, and I've still got most of them. When measured on two systems, I don't know what this is. Yeah, it's very clearly some kind of a, a review. And this looks like um, some kind of a write-up on new CDs that have come out or something like that. I don't know. I'm not going to stop and translate these even though they are cool. Oh, look at this. Got a horn-loaded speaker right there of some sort. I'll have to go through that in more detail later once I've got more time. This is kind of cool. I believe I've seen something like that on Techmoan's channel. Let's see, what's over here? 300 plus 300, some kind of a power amp. B2301, not sure brand. It's probably here, but in Japanese. And yeah, preamp maybe. Another power amp up here. Integrated amp there. That's Denon. I can see that for sure. I've got Nakai GX7 there. Not sure about that model. Ooh, Z6000. You know what that is? That is an actual dragon killer, possibly. It seems to get mentioned in that phrase. TX Z6000. There's only one model above that, the Z7000. And the only difference between them is the Z7000 auto calibrates. This one's manual. This is the one I would want if I were getting any of the, ma of the uh, Master Series tape decks. And look down here. We have my very own DRM3 from Denon. Yeah, that's a, that's a deck I should really get back to at some point. Now that I've gotten the uh, UKZ parts in the uh, playback side of that deck, it's phenomenal as a playback deck. So I wonder if I could still get this thing to record better. 
I should really get back to that and find out. All right, EQ there. EQ a spectrum analyzer there from Akai. Kenwood here. And Kenwood's a bit of an interesting uh, thing with the Japanese because uh, Kenwood was known as Trio first. So uh, when you look for a tape deck in Japan and you're looking for Kenwood, try Trio and Kenwood. Trio for the older stuff, Kenwood for the newer stuff, because that's when they changed their name is sometime in the early 80s, I think. Or maybe even late 70s. But uh, yeah, nothing to do with tape decks here. DA3500, DC3510, DT3520, I don't know what these are. Oh, yes I do. Digital I.O., AD converter. Oh, this is a serious bit of compact disc encoder. What? Okay, I'm going to have to come back to that later. Okay, what's the next page? Technics, AC power unit. Audio processor SV100. Okay, I'm not really here for that, but whatever. More Technics. Speaker stuff. Amplifier stuff. Control console stuff. This looks like high dollar stuff right here. <laughs> oh yeah. 690,000 yen or $6,900. Yeah, in today's money. Plus inflation and what do you got? You got something stupid expensive that I can't afford. Okay, Sony PCM. That's right, I remember uh, 12 volt vids talking about this stuff on his channel. Pulse code modulation. These encode uh, PCM digital onto a, a videotape. Really cool stuff. Let's see, what do we got here? Lux kit. Is this something to do with Luxman? I don't know. I don't know this brand at all. So, uh,. Yeah, Luxman is another brand I want to get into for tape decks because uh, uh, Alpine owned them at one point. But uh, yeah, this has to be Luxman. That's their logo, isn't it? Oh, here we go. Hitachi. Oh, the two decks I want most from Hitachi right there. D9, 2200 MB. I passed on one of those, oh, what was it, two years ago? I was scared of it at the time. It had way too much wrong with it, I thought, to even try to uh, try try to uh, try to try to try to try to try working on it. But uh, yeah, I lost out on it because I wasn't willing to do what it took to <laughs> get the thing. I ended up with the XK007 instead, and uh, not for nothing. But I love that deck, so I still got a good deal on that. Yeah, let's continue on here. We got a. A lot of pages to get through yet. That's a store listing uh, or a store advertisement. Look, even Denon had one of these things with the uh, front view CD player. DCD 2000. I would take one of those for sure. Like anything that looks like this, I would take. I'm not big on CD players anymore, but one of those, yes please. More AccuPhase. Enriched life through technology. Well, I try to do that every day on this channel, don't I? Precision Stereo Preamplifier. Cool. Sony Strawberries. Buy a strawberry from Sony today. Clearly that's about uh, some kind of a turntable cartridge. And here's another thing for the DRM3 and DRM2. Yeah, I'm glad I got that deck. Even if it doesn't record very well compared to some of my other decks, I'm glad I have it. It was good practice for when I get a DRM4 or a DRM44HX. I almost bought a 44HX, what was it, a couple of months ago. But uh, didn't have the money at the time, had to let it go. Victor, JVC. I've never cared one whit about JVC's speaker systems. So uh, let's flip the page on that. 
What do we have here? Toroid Power Transformers. Okay. More popular electronics type stuff. ICs here from, uh, looks like, I think that's Mitsubishi. Could be Matsushita. No, that's probably Matsushita. Panasonic. Yeah, National. That's, that's Matsushita. I'm calling it right now. Now watch me be wrong later. Okay, CD. Looks like we've got CD comparisons for the NEC CD803, something or other XRZ90, DX5, DA01. Yeah, CD player comparison. And here we go. All of the awesome CD players I would love to have. CD803, front loading, vertical. XRZ90, front loading, vertical. That's, the, that's I guess, Toshiba. DX5, not vertical, but still kind of cool. Kyocera, DA01, very cool. I would love to have a whole stack of Kyocera components, honestly, just because they're so hard to find these days. LO3DP, that would be Kenwood, if I'm looking at it right. CDP101, Sony. These are all drawer loading stuff, not interested. DP101. What brand is that? Oh, okay, Diatone. Yeah, I would do that. Have to look for one of those. Pioneer PD1 right there. Obviously, they're reviewing all the the awesome CD players of the day. XLV1 there, that's JVC. Not huge on JVC, as mentioned, but uh, those tape decks I've got have been turning me around on that. Possibly. Because I've heard the uh, DD99, and it's phenomenal. People have said the DD99 and the earlier D9 sounds like a Nakamichi BX300. And uh, I kind of believe it after listening to the uh, playback quality on that. This is kind of interesting. I'm not much for these... Uh, this form factor, but uh, that's kind of cool anyway. CD1, I don't know what brand that is. I don't care to uh, squint at it long enough to find out. This is Lodi, that's Hitachi. Dad 1000. Yeah, if Dad could buy me one of those, I'd be happy, but I'm sure Dad would be very happy if he had the kind of money it took to buy one of those. Okay, looks like uh, various people giving their opinions on the CD players. Test methodology and test bench, it looks like. Not sure. What have we got here? Something, I don't know. EL34, vacuum tubes. i am never been really that big on vacuum tube tech. I don't care if it sounds warm or sounds whatever, this or that or the other thing. I've just never really liked working with vacuum tubes. Oh, here we go again. More test stuff. I love this. But yeah, there's just so much of this to go through. Let's skip over all this stuff here. TADSP TD1201 Okay, I'll have to translate that later with the app and see what that's all about. I'm nuts about speakers, too, in case you haven't figured that out by the fact that I've got two gigantic tapped horns in the corner. Don't know what that is. Oh, yes, we're talking more about speakers there. This is a more of a cassette deck channel, so we'll skip over the speaker stuff and amplifier stuff and even though it's really cool more technic stuff here down there it looks like that's just more test bench stuff and this is uh, another ad clearly 8000 yen for this little amp down there 20 watts times 2 western electric interesting 
Eltis Corporation. Does this have something to do with the old Western Electric Corporation that we had in, for theater sound? I don't know. San A. Probably another star ad. Oh, we've even got mixers in this thing. So musical instrument technology too, or pro audio, as it were. Theater sound system. Metal glaze fader control. Interesting. There's ads for everything in this thing. I love it. SRD's new lineup. Audio notes. Look at this setup going on in here. That's crazy. This is only making me want to spend more money in Japan so I can get more of these magazines. I'll tell you what. Uh, something uh, about a listening room here. Be awesome to talk to some of these guys in real life to see what their audio journey was compared to mine and how it's different in Japan compared to uh, how it is here or how it was here, I should say. Yeah, we'll skip past all this. Looks like reviews for uh, media. New releases or some such. Oh, what do we got here? I have no idea. Oh, here's all these button switches I've come to know and loathe all these years. These things are always dirty. They're always impossible to clean. And yeah, they're ubiquitous now, especially through the 90s gear. But uh, back in the day, they were just the hot new thing, it looks like. But I hate them. I can't stand them. I prefer to replace them rather than try to clean them, because uh, cleaning them is just the worst. Okay, looks like RF modulators or something there. Oh, what is this? PCM stuff? I bet that's it. And it looks like Sony wasn't alone with that. Diatone D102, low D PCM V300, Sony PCM F1, PCM 701 ES, SV100. Okay then, 83 was happening for electronics. Yeah, I think that's what this is. is uh, PCM encoders for videotape or something or other. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. That's a VCR right there. Or rather, it's a VCR that does a PCM audio or something. But yeah, this would be digital audio back in the day for stored on audio tape. Yeah, there's the low D. Looks like it's got the transport right inside the uh, housing there. That's good. I might want to find one of those at one point. There's the Sony setup right there. Well, the PCM F1 anyway. Then there's the PCM 701 ES. I believe that's the one I saw on 12 volt vids channel. Could be wrong. I don't know what Sony had. It's been a while since I've seen that video too. Technics. A write up on PCM. It looks like really cool stuff. I love this magazine. I regret that I only bought one of these to go with that tape deck. What is this? STS-555ES. Is that a tuner? Must be. Oh, here we go. Low D, D8. That's one down from their... Well, I don't know if it's, a, it's their top of the line in the D9 or if it's the D2200 MB that was the top of the line. Must be the 2200 MB because we saw that ad earlier in this uh, magazine. MC2000 turntable cartridge. I'm really not that big into turntables, so... DS5000, I'm not sure what brand that is. I'm sure it says here somewhere, but I'm not going to pull out the Translate app again. Not for uh, speakers, anyway. J2000, 
JBL L112. Very cool stuff. I love to see all this sciencey stuff in here. That is so cool. For a speaker nerd like me, this is just the bee's knees. Definitely have to look through this in more detail later. We're getting close to the end, don't worry. It's coming. A522 turntable from Lux Kit. That has to be Luxman. I can't think of who else that would be. The logo kind of looks like theirs on all the other Lux Kit stuff I've seen in here. Oh, we've got an oscilloscope in here. Cool. This is just awesome, all this stuff. Got circuit diagrams and everything in here. For, all, for that matter, this could be some kind of an audio uh, analyzer or something, too. I don't know. It looks like a scope, so that's what I'm going to call it. Oh, look at this. We've even got a tape write-up for Maxell. Maxell is Hitachi, by the way. Hitachi had their own brand of uh, tapes as well, but uh, for the most part, they were just Maxell. Look at this. This is just so cool. Looks like it goes into the formulation and all that. Okay, I'm getting the Translate app out because uh, we need to translate this one for sure. Okay, I don't know if you can see it all. I'm going to tap the uh, camera screen so, to see if you can actually see it. All right, in response to the diversification of audio such as portable audio tubes, DAD, and FM radio, Maxell has developed a new tape, the XL1. The new improved XL is the third. It is not only suitable for indoor use, but also for headphone and stereo use. I'll drink to that because I love Maxell tapes, always have. I swear by them. But uh, what is this here, this diagram? Ion arrangement diagram of new epitaxial magnetic material. Cool, cool, cool. I got to get way too close to the camera in order to uh, translate this, so forgive me if you can't see anything. This is just beyond cool. Let's see, we focus on high resolution tapes. Uh, maybe that mistranslated. The new XL1 and new XL2 have the following characteristics and features. Ultra fine particle, new epitaxial. Oh, wait, it says something about an XL3. I've never seen that. Is that the XL2S? I don't know. But yeah, it looks like it goes right into detail on tape formulation and everything in here. Okay, I gotta stop nerding out over this page, otherwise we'll never get this done. Oh, this is just so cool. I may have mentioned that before. I love all this science stuff. Ooh, Jewel Lock Fine Axis. This appears to be JVC, if I'm going by the uh, JVC logo right there. Something to do with their tape decks. Looks like auto reverse technology. I bet that's what it is. Yeah, forward and reverse. Looks like other brand auto reverse versus JVC brand auto reverse. I don't know if I'm ever going to be doing another JVC auto reverse after the TDX501, but uh, slight spoilers, I now know exactly why that thing ate the tape. So uh, I could see myself doing one in the future, possibly. They've got direct drive auto reverse tape decks. And those are kind of interesting to me, so uh, maybe some other time. 
Oh yes, clearly JVC's bragging about their auto reverse stuff here. DDV9, that's one of the models I would want if I got a JVC auto reverse again. I don't know if it's quartz lock, it probably is not, but uh, it's direct drive. Oh, we've even got a belt path diagram there. Cool. Beta movie. I have never been into beta at all. Oh yeah, there's the DDV9 right there. So yeah, they're clearly bragging about their uh, auto reverse technology and uh, I'm kind of interested now. <laughs> I'm easily influenced, what can I say? Ooh, computers even. Is this the coolest magazine to have ever existed? I'm thinking yes. Now what is this? HR 7100. JVC, obviously. This must be one of their VCRs. Must be, because that's their naming scheme for their VCRs. Looks like a build-it-yourself uh, video switcher here or something. Yeah, I gotta get over to Japan real quick and uh, start finding all this cool stuff that they've gotten over the years that we never got, because this is just so cool, all this stuff. WV-777B don't know what brand that would be so I'll just change the uh, page here more JVC stuff it looks like that's definitely Victor over there Satacon I don't know what that is that could be JVC that could be something else honestly I'm impressed that this uh, came to me in this shape too because uh, it looks like this was very well cared for by whoever had it last this looks like the old reader service cards that it, we used to get in stereo review where uh, you marked off the uh, the products you were interested in and sent it in and then you got brochures sent to you man I should dig out that brochure collection at some point and start showing you those things because uh, some of those things Real hard to find now. Okay, I don't know what this is. Looks like all ads. Best Compo Stereo 83. Oh, what it would have been like to be a kid in the 80s in Japan with this kind of stuff going on. Instead of me sitting there in Swift Current, Saskatchewan, only having access to the stores we had access to back in the day. We're getting towards the end now, very clearly. Probably not much left of the magazine. Are these classified ads or something? It looks like it. They've got phone numbers there. Yeah, we're getting close to the end here. Not much of note. Audio craft manual. Not sure what this is. I'll whip out the translator later and figure that out. Uh, some more to do with uh, CDs here because they were the latest thing in 1983. Yeah, second last page we've got uh, speaker components here. Clearly an ad for a store, and the uh, back cover is Onkyo. And uh, we're going to touch on this for a second here, because uh, I've actually heard Onkyo speakers before. If you remember back in the day, RCA decided to try this uh, very unfortunately named line of components called Dementia. And they were seriously high-end stuff, but uh, the name put everybody off. And uh, this was supposed to be RCA's saving grace and their way forward in the 80s. And they're supposed to be their, their next big thing to uh, bring back the company's 
to greatness. So uh, the TV components for that for those systems were RCA, obviously, but uh, the audio components were Hitachi, almost all of them, and uh, including the uh, MTR one eighteen cassette deck I've got on the shelf right now. The uh, that tape deck is a, a Hitachi DX DX six. Sorry, I'm kind of stumbling on my words here, but uh, the speakers in those Dementia lines were not Hitachi or RCA. They were Onkyo. In fact, I recognize this. This is one of them. Right there. I've heard these speakers, and I've been after them ever since. They sound amazing. And I know they sound amazing because my parents had a music store in the 80s, in Swift Current, and their music store was based in the in the, in the basement of a furniture store. And the furniture store had a full-scale dementia system set up for demonstration, and I got to hear it. And, uh, yeah, I have been after these speakers ever since. I want a pair. Bad. I don't know why I want them so much, but I want a pair. Anyhow, yeah, that's the uh, Radio Technology January 1983. And uh, maybe we'll do other videos like this if you guys are interested. You guys all have to let me know, but uh, yeah. That's this video for today. I'll see you in the next video. See you on Saturday. Take care.